Hello, young readers. Welcome to Storytime with me, your darling little narrator. If you like this channel, please subscribe and then click the bell to get notifications every time a new story is posted. Oh, and if you like a story, please smash that like button. Okay, now if you're ready, sit back, relax as we start our journey to story time. The name of this story is called The Rocky Mountain Railroad and the Runaway Caboose by Glenn Brooks and Matthew Lehman. A long time ago, in the mountain valley of Colorado, lay the western town of Grand River. Grand River was the home of four steam locomotives. There was Big Smokey, Old Pete, Palmer, who everyone called the General, and Cinders, the smallest of them all. At night, the General, Old Pete, Big Smokey, and Cinders slept in an old shed known as the Roundhouse. One sunny day in the spring, the station boss stopped Cinders as she was leaving the Roundhouse to do her daily shunting duties around the rail yard. Wait, Cinders, he said. I need you to do something special for me today. All the other engines are busy, said the station boss. So I want you to pull the supply train to the Stanley Mine. It's very steep and difficult. Can you do it? He asked. Yes, said Cinders happily. Good said the station boss. You'll need to leave in 30 minutes. Cinders was excited. It was her first big task. I wonder what new things I will get to see, she thought. The brakeman joined Cinders' engine tender to the heavy boxcars waiting in the yard. The tender was filled with coal and water for her boiler. The caboose was coupled to the end of the train. Cinders pulled the train out of the rail yard, blowing a loud toot from her whistle and feeling very important. Supplies for the mines could only be delivered in the warmer months. It snowed so heavily in the mountains during the winter that none of the trains could get through. Steaming over the great prairies was great fun. Cinders was not even a little bit scared when the trestle bridge over the river creaked and groaned under her weight. Soon, she began the long climb up Mount Toltec. Cinders had never seen such beautiful scenery before. The mountains looked so high. Snow glistened on their peaks. Wow! This is great, she tooted. Halfway up, Cinders began to slow down. Slower and slower and slower she went, until she was not sure that she would be able to make it. Gosh, these mountains are even bigger than they look, said Cinders to herself as she pulled. Just as she was about to run out of steam, Cinder saw the end of the track. Phew! I've made it, cried Cinders. She was very tired by the time the brakeman uncoupled the boxcars at the Stanley Mine. As Cinders was being turned on the turntable for the return journey, a switchman came running toward her. The caboose has come loose! he cried. It's rolling down the mountain. I threw the switch to stop it, but it was too late. The fireman shoveled more coal into Cinder's firebox to build up steam. Come on, Cinder's, said the engineer. Let's go and get that naughty caboose. Meanwhile, the caboose was racing down the mountain. 
Cinders could see the caboose ahead. She knew that she would have to speed up to catch it before the 5.30 train from Silver Reef came by. We need to go as fast as we can if we want to catch that caboose, yelled the engineer. With an extra loud blast of the whistle, Cinders raced ahead. Her wheels seemed to fly over the tracks. Cinders approached the mining town of Ophir. The long trestle bridge swayed as she charged across it. The caboose was getting closer and closer. Just as she caught up with the caboose, Cinders heard the whistle of a steam engine. It's the 530 from Silver Reef, shouted the engineer. Come on, Cinders, it's now or never. Cinders didn't have to be told. She rushed up to the runaway caboose and pushed the locking bar into the caboose's coupler. When the locking pin clicked into place, she stepped hard onto the brakes to stop the caboose. Cedar slowed down so that the conductor could run ahead to the siding. She waited nervously as he changed the switch. Now Cedars could see the 5.30 train racing towards them. It blew its whistle in alarm. Cinders shoved the caboose onto the siding. ka went the track as the conductor threw the switch. Cinders had just pulled her tender out of the way when the 5.30 train came rushing past. When Cinders returned to the roundhouse that evening, everyone was there. They all clapped and cheered. She had helped to prevent an accident, and they were all proud of her. The station boss even came down to hang a ribbon around her smokestack. Cinders was glad that everything had turned out well. Well, that ends our story. That was a good one, wasn't it, guys? Cinders really showed her determination when she got to the top of that mountain to get to that mine with that heavy load she had. And she saved the day by catching a loose caboose. This was a good one. Well, until next time, my young readers, I am your little darling narrator, out.